segment three. Um, so now we're moving on towards looking at some of the permanent uh, life insurance products. In our previous segment, we looked at term insurance, uh, which is very limited and uh, has that limited scope of coverage. So in this segment, we're going to be moving on to looking at some of the permanent products and specifically whole life is what we will be focusing on. All right, there are other components of whole life which include taxation. So we'll be covering that in a later on segment uh, when we look at how certain policies may get taxed um, if we take out money. So we'll look at that later on. But in this segment, uh, I will just be introducing whole life, what it is, how it works, who is the ideal client for it, and some of the advantages and disadvantages as well. All right, so let's take a look um, for whole life. So when we're looking at permanent insurance, there's another product which I will also mention briefly, um, that's considered permanent insurance and that's called T100. So there's two that we're looking at here. So one is whole life and one is T100. T stands for term and 100 stands for the age. So even though term is considered uh, a non, when we look at term insurance, it's not a permanent sort of a coverage, but when we go to T100, now it becomes permanent coverage because it's covering you up until age 100. So it's not like the other term insurance policies which have a limitation of 70, 75 years. This is covering you up until you're 100 years old. All right, so term until age 100, and it's great because it also has set premiums. That means that the premiums are not going to increase. So what's really the difference between term 100 and whole life? One of the biggest difference is that term does not have any CSV, and that stands for cash surrender value. So this is for someone who's just looking for um, a cheap, permanent life insurance product. They don't want any other options in their life insurance. They don't want any benefits of uh, having any other, like building a reserve in their insurance or doing anything else. All they want, they know they're never going to cancel it, and they just want to pay uh, the minimum premium and have a product. So this would be for that ideal client, because if we compare between term, uh, term 100 and whole life, term would be cheaper because whole life gives a lot more options to its clients as well. All right. So now we're going to move on to taking a look at whole life. So whole life uh, uh, policies, just as it states, is considered straight life or ordinary life policies. What do we mean by that? That means you pay your premiums for life and you're covered for life. Right. So simple as that. Um, Premium is also set with whole life, but the difference is that earlier on the premium, they kind of rake up the price to balance out for the later years. So let's say this is just for example, let's say if we have like a 30 year old getting term 100, maybe it might be, um, I don't know, let's say $100 and the same 80, um, the same 30 year old maybe getting whole life, it might be $150. Um, but that is, is uh, and it will stay that same price until the rest of their life, right? So it, it is higher in the initial years to sort of offset that risk that the insurance company is taking for the rest of the life. So it will stay the same, same price. Biggest, biggest positive or biggest, biggest uh, feature that people really, really love about whole life is that it builds a policy reserve, which is a CSV or cash surrender value. Now, it's important to note that this is not something that's available right away. It does take minimum eight to 10 years for you to build a CSV. So it is, uh, you know, you have to actually have the policy for a while to build a reserve. And what is a, a cash surrender value? So if you remember with term insurance in the previous segment, we talked about one of the disadvantages of term is that once the policy is done, it's worth nothing. So this is where whole life comes into place, where it is a big advantage of whole life, is that as you're paying your premiums, you're building a reserve in your policy. So if you pay your premiums for 20, 25 years, you build a reserve. And depending on what your premium is and how long you've been paying for, that might be 50,000, it might be 75,000. So you build a good amount of reserve in your policy. And if you want to give up your policy, just as the name suggests, cash surrender value. So if you want to surrender your policy, you no longer want it, you can take that cash surrender value. There are taxes that are applied. We'll look at that in the taxation segment. But you have some access to that money. So out of the 50, after the taxes, you will still get to keep a good amount of money from that. If you were to cancel a term, 
uh, you will not get anything. It will just be canceled and that's it, right? So that's one of the big positives of this is that people build a reserve. So it's not like it's, it's worth nothing. You have something to show for that, all right? And you also have options with uh, term 100, even if you go with this option, there's no options. You pay premium, you're covered, that's it. But with whole life, you have options. Do you want a participating policy, which means you're involved in the insurance company's profits um, and all of that, or non-participating, which means you pay your premium and you're covered and you don't want anything to do with that. Of course, if you're participating, your premium will be higher. So your costs will be a little bit higher if you are participating versus non-participating. What's important here is that the dividend option is not guaranteed. Dividend means a share in the profits. So if you're participating, if you have a participating policies, that means that if the insurance company gets a profit, you get a portion of that uh, as your share. But it's not guaranteed. Insurance company might never, uh, it's unlikely, but they'll say, they can say, we never had a profit, so we never have anything to share. That's unlikely. Um, but like for three years or four years, they can say, we don't have a profit, so nothing to share. Right. But the idea is that you do uh, you are um, part of that plan. Right. So once they do have that profit, you are entitled to get that share. That's a participating. And you have options. How would you like to receive your part uh, of that share? So you get to have some options in terms of uh, how you would like that to come to you. So one. It